from the um, the, the title was Desola Desolation from the Satanic Army. And um, we can see here uh, that um, that there's destruction and torment that's going to happen to mankind and that um, it's going to specifically be happening to the unbelievers. So um, it starts off with the fifth angel sounded. I saw, an, I saw a star fall in from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. So we talked about um, the star that was fallen, and that was Lucifer, and he was an angel of God. Then we also talked about the bottomless pit in Luke uh, eight thirty one. Um, it describes um, when Jesus was um, crossing the uh, sea um, across from the Lake of Galilee. He came across a man who was being possessed by um, demons and Jesus asked what is his name and then he, he said my name is Legion and the Legion asked Jesus not to send him to the abyss uh, so here we see that the abyss or the bottomless pit is the place where there's the satanic army um, we also talked from Revelations 20 1 to 3 and it describes how Satan was thrown into the bottomless pit and he's locked up for a thousand years so from here, we can understand that the bottomless pit is the temporary jail of Satan. Uh, then um, when the bottomless pit is opened, um, it was described that smoke came out of a great furnace. The sun and the air became darkened and locusts like an army of demons uh, came out. Uh, we talked about how locusts is a symbol of destruction in the Old Testament. Um, it says the locust has powers like a scorpion. They do not hurt, so they were not. They were commanded not to hurt the grass, the trees, and green things. Uh, they were not to hurt the men who had the seal of God on their forehead. Um, so, and then we also see that they, uh, these locusts have a king. Uh, so we can see that this is a satanic army, um, and how they're described is their teeth is like teeth of lions, breastplate of iron. They had tails like scorpions uh, the noise is like an army of chariots rushing into batter, battle uh, so this um, army a uh, satanic army is going to torment the unbelieving world for five months then um, from verses 13 to 21 it talks about the angel um, sounding the sixth trumpet and when that is sounded there's a release of four angels who are bound at the great ri river euphrates um, so we talked about uh, Euphrates being a significant spot. Um, it's the place that was given to the Israelites and also around the Euphrates there's um, there's a lot of nations. Uh, so these nations are the enemies of Israel. Um, so the uh, there was an army of horsemen and the total number of the army counted two million. Um, the army we, it was described uh, they had, um, those who sat on the horses, they had breastplates of different colors, fiery, fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. Um, the horses, they had heads of lions, and out of the mouth came fire, smoke, and brimstone. The deadly power in their mouth, they had deadly power in their mouth and tails. The tails were like biting serpents, and they can attack men from the front and the rear. Uh, so from here, we understood this is the demonic horseman army. And what they were sent out to do is to cause massive destruction and a third of the population was killed. And then even after all of this, um, we found that the people, the people were still unrepented. Uh, they continued to do demon worship and idolatry, uh, murder and theft, sexual immorality, uh, use of drugs will become demonic. Uh, religious practice and the people um, still were not repented uh, so then we talked about the application um, for us right now is that we have the opportunity now to repent and submit ourselves to God um, and we shouldn't be like the unrepented people thank you Justin thank you Justin God bless you and uh, uh, once again I greet you out of the master's name of our Lord, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, this is a great privilege in our life to gather together like this to 
listen the word of god especially from the book of revelation i think almost we have covered uh, the half of the uh, book of revelation maybe up to uh, nine chapter okay so our last friday bible study was on 23rd july and uh, for the uh, three weeks the, the past three weeks we uh, could not make it because we had uh, uh, some other programs each week uh, i think one saturday we had abs and one saturday we had the fasting prayer and one saturday uh, we had a special meeting at george bar house so i know it is very uh, difficult to reconnect the previous portions of revelation uh, because uh, for every every meeting we were dealing with different topics so it is not easy for uh, all of us to recollect all those previous portions different different topics that we are talking about maybe in in different meetings okay, wednesday meeting and friday meeting saturday meeting sunday meeting and friday meeting so it's it's difficult to recollect all those things but even uh, no worries we will try to maximum to recollect or, or reconnect the the previous portions uh, in the coming classes okay so but let me uh, tell you one thing that please do not hesitate to text me if you have any uh, questions or doubt and if you need more clarification on these portions you have to text me then i'll be able to i mean find out the answer for you and uh, i'll be clarifying in the in the next class okay so in the previous classes we have been uh, trying to understand many things from revelation chapter 8 and 9 revelation chapter 8 and 9 uh, that speaks about the trumpet judgment okay trumpet judgment and we already studied in detail uh, from those uh, those two chapters about the sixth trumpet judgments and what will happen when the angel blows the trumpets during the great tribulation period so there are many things many events are taking place and there are many uh, incidents takes place when uh, the each uh, trumpets are, uh, are blown so we understand that in an uh, up to up to sixth trumpet judgment we have seen there are many things that are happening during the time of great tribulation and today uh, we will have to we will have a look on uh, what would happen when the seventh trumpet is blown that is from chapter 11 chapter 11 verses 15 to 19 but before that uh, we can we can see a gap or interval uh, or you can call it as a break uh, between the sixth and the seventh trumpet <clears throat> okay and that is from chapter 10 verses 1 through chapter 11 verse 14 okay you know when when you study about those things we understand there is a there is a gap there is a there is an interval or there is a break between the sixth and the seventh trumpet so up to the up to the uh, sixth trumpet and the sixth trumpet judgment you can see from up to up to chapter 9 at the same time you are seeing the seventh trumpet in chapter 11 so we are missing the 10th chapter okay so now we are going to study about all those things I mean what are the things that is which is going to happen during the time of that gap or during the time of that interval time interval period of break time okay so in between the sixth trumpet and the seventh trumpet so when we study about the interval time between the sixth and the seventh trumpet you can see an interval time and events between these sixth and the seventh trumpet so which is mentioned in chapter 10 verses 1 through 11 chapter 14 this is a long, lengthy portion lengthy passage we are not going to read all those portions but we will be reading uh, uh, as we move on we'll be reading some of the uh, verses from uh, those chapters okay so there are mainly three different events Uh, happens during this interval or break time there are mainly three different events which is going to happen uh, uh, during this interval time or break time okay the first thing is that is in revelation chapter 10 verses 1 to 11 that is the mighty angel of god with a little book and the message okay the first thing the first particular thing which is going to happen is that revelation chapter 10 verses 1 through 11 that is the mighty angel of god with a little book and the message okay and the second portion second thing is from revelation chapter 11 verses 1 and 2 and there you can see the measuring of the temple of god the measuring 
of the temple of God. Okay. And the third portion is from Revelation chapter 11, verses 3 to 14. Revelation chapter 11, verses 3 to 14. And the, the, the main portion which is uh, written in that part is the ministry of the two witnesses of God. The ministry of the two witnesses of God. So when you go through those portions, maybe chapter 10 and 11, you will understand uh, what are the, what are the uh, uh, special things that which is mentioned in these portions. So I'll try to explain um, uh, uh, those three special events, uh, maybe one by one, which happens during the interval time. So you have to understand one thing, all these things are happening during the time of the Great Tribulation. And I told you once that many times that, uh, you know, after the second coming of Jesus Christ only, uh, the, the Great Tribulation period is coming. So during the time of the Great Tribulation, uh, many things are happening, many things are happening. So this is happening. So this portion, maybe chapter 10 and uh, uh, chapter 11, verses 1 to 14, uh, that events are happening during the break time uh, in between the sixth trumpet and the seventh uh, trumpet. Okay, so the first point, the first thing is the mighty angel of God with a little book and the message. Okay, so when you go through those that portion, maybe, yeah, we will read that portion maybe, so that will be very clear for you. Uh, maybe Revelation chapter 10, uh, verses 1 through 11. So, uh, what, any, any one person, maybe, yeah, Elsa, are you ready? To read okay then uh, uh, Elsa will read that portion at the same time uh, all of you can look into that portion then you will uh, get an idea about uh, all those things yes, yes so is it verses 1 to 11 yes okay then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven wrapped in a cloud with a rainbow over his head and in his face was like the sun and his legs like pillars of fire he had a little scroll open in his hand and he set his right foot on the sea his left foot on the land and call, called out with a loud voice like a lion roaring out when he called out the seven thunders sounded and when the seven thunders had sounded I was about to write but I had heard a voice from heaven saying seal up what the seven thunders had have said and do not write it down and the angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever who created heaven and what is in it and earth and what is in it and the sea and what is in it that there would be no more delay but in the days of the trumpet call to be sounded by the seventh angel the mystery of god would be fulfilled just as he announced to his servants the prophets then the voice that i heard from the heaven spoke to me again saying Go, take the scroll that is open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the little, the little scroll. And he said to me, take it and eat it. It will make your stomach bitter, but, put, but in your mouth it will be sweet as honey. And I took the little scroll from the hand of the angel and ate it. It was sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it in my stomach, my stomach was bitter. And I was told, you must again prophesy, prophesy about many peoples and nations and languages and kings. Amen. Oh, so thank you, Elsa. You know, uh, in that particular portion, there are many things mentioned, but uh, we don't have enough time to go through all those portions, but we will uh, find out the, the major part of that portion and the, and the passage. So the first thing that uh, we can see there is the mighty angel or it is in, in other translation, it is written, the strong angel, the strong angel coming down out of heaven. Okay, so uh, you can see uh, what, is the, what is the description of that angel, okay, which is coming from heaven, the description of the angel or what is the appearance of that angel. Okay, so the first thing is um, the angel is a mighty angel or uh, a strong angel. And the second thing is uh, uh, the angel is coming down from heaven. And the angel is clothed with cloud, and the angel is a rainbow has a has a rainbow on his head, and uh, uh, the angel's face is like the sun, and angel's feet is like pillars of fire. Okay, so we do not know what is the name of that angel. Rather, we understand 
that these are the appearance of that particular angel. Uh, this is the description about the appearance of that angel. Okay, now uh, we will go to the second portion that is the, the declaration of the angel. The declaration of the angel that is from chapter 5 verses, sorry, chapter 10 verses 5 to 11. Okay, so the first portion was uh, the description of the angel that is from verses, okay, chapter 10 verses 1 through 4. Okay, now we are going to the second uh, a portion that is verses 5 to 11, the declaration of the angel. Okay, so we saw that the strong angel is coming down from heaven. The strong angel or mighty angel is coming down from heaven and that angel has a different look, different appearance or different description about the appearance of the angel. At the same time, when you read verses 5 to 11, you will understand there is a declaration of the angel. That means the declaration or the announcement of the angel is mentioned in verses six and seven particularly, six and seven particularly, it says that, and so by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things in it, and the earth and the things in it, and the sea and the things in it, that there will be delay no longer, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, then the mystery of God is finished as he preached, to his servants, uh, uh, the, the prophets. Okay, so the declaration about, uh, the, the, the declaration from the angel is, there will be delay no longer. There will be delay no longer. Okay, in Malayalam it is written, Ini kaala mundaguga illa. Ini kaala mundaguga illa, verse 6. Okay, 6. That means, no delay for the further judgments of the seventh trumpet. There will not be any delay for the further judgments of seventh trumpet. That means that the seventh trumpet is going to be blown right after the sixth one. Then maybe something will be happening, but no sooner the seventh trumpet also will be blown and there are many things which is going to happen. So that is the declaration of the angel. Okay, The declaration is there will be delay no longer. We know that various judgments have already been felt by the heavens, the earth, and the sea. And more judgments are to come. Okay, Already we completed many things, studying about many things when uh, the sixth uh, I mean, uh, I mean, trumpet was blown. It is, a, it, is, it is a judgment, a trumpet judgment. So we, we saw many things, you know, uh, that uh, the, the, the judgments are happening in, 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 in heaven, in earth, and also in the sea. And, and it says that there are more judgments are going to come upon the earth. Okay? But there will not be more delay for that. God will accelerate. God will accelerate. And God will, will do that, uh, do the judgments of God, and he will accomplish his purpose no sooner. That is the meaning of that particular verse 6. That means it is coming on. Okay, so there are many things and there are many judgments again coming. So that is the thing that will, that uh, that is mentioned in this particular portion. And now we will go to the next, uh, I mean, uh, portion that is Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 and 2 speaks about the measuring of the temple of God. The measuring of the temple of God. I know that as, as soon as I speak, uh, you are also writing, uh, uh, noting down all those points. That's good. Okay, so great. You can you can take down those points at the same time. I'll be uh, reciting all these things. And uh, this portion speaks about the measuring of the temple of God. Okay, Revelation chapter eleven verses one and two. We already read uh, chapter ten verses uh, uh, one to eleven, and now we are going to chapter eleven verses one and two. Yes, Elsa, you can read that. Then I was given a measuring rod like a staff, and I was told, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship here. But do not measure the court outside the temple. Leave that out, for it is given over to the nations, and they will trample the holy city for 42 months. Okay, what is that? You know, here we understand 
you know, John was given, John was given a measuring rod. John was given a measuring rod like a staff. <clears throat> and someone said to him, you know, John was the person, Apostle John was the person who was receiving this vision. So somebody said to him that get up and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship in it. Leave out the cord which is outside the temple and do not measure it. For it has been given to the nations and they will tread under foot the holy city for 42 months. Okay, so the place is Jerusalem. The place is Jerusalem. When this is going to happen, the measuring of the temple of God and the people of God inside it. Okay, the measuring of the temple of God and the people of God. That incident is going to happen in, in, in Jerusalem. And the time is the first half of the tribulation. The first half of the tribulation, this is going to happen. You know, Israel is worshipping again at its restored temple. Okay, it, it was built, it, it will be built under the protection of the Antichrist. It seems that, uh, I mean, uh, good to interpret this uh, temple as an actual building in the holy city of Jerusalem. Okay, so I'll tell you what is going to happen uh, when uh, when Antichrist will take charge of this world and when Antichrist is ruling during the time of the Great Tribulation. Okay, so you have to understand one thing. During the time of the uh, Great Tribulation, uh, Israel will have a covenant with Antichrist and Antichrist will promise to, to, to build a temple in Israel and he will give some offering also. That means offers. What is that? The offer about the freedom. That means I will give you freedom. I will give you uh, freedom to worship and I will give you peace and everything. Okay. So Antichrist and also the people of Israel, Jewish people, they will have a covenant together. And Antichrist will uh, give a promise that, okay, I will do one thing. I will build a uh, a, a temple for you. You can uh, make your worship in the temple because uh, the people of Israel, they are not having the temple now. They are not having the temple now. And it is believed that after the second coming of Jesus Christ only, the temple will be built. And uh, at the same time, there are uh, some people say that, okay, before the second coming of Jesus Christ, or before the return of, of Jesus Christ also may happen, the rebuilding of the temple. But whatever it may be, <clears throat> that, is, that doesn't matter with the children of God, okay? So anyway, you know, this is going to happen. The Antichrist will help them and they will, uh, Antichrist will give them the promise that, okay, I will uh, give you a temple and I will build a temple for you. You can come inside and you can uh, worship your living God and I will give you the freedom of worship and peace to you. You know, uh, the, you know uh, this, is, this is known as the tribulation temple. This is known as the tribulation temple. So, during the time of the Great Tribulation, there will be a temple, particular temple for the people of Israel. Now, about these, there are many references in the Bible that references are given in your uh, screen sharing. Okay, Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, Daniel chapter 9, uh, verse 27, chapter uh, 11, verse 30, uh, 31, chapter 12, verse 11, Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, Mark chapter 13, verse 14, and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 and 4. We don't have time to read all those portions, but just I'm telling you that these are the main references you can um, uh, listen about the tribulation temple, the, tribula the temple which, we, which is going to be built uh, uh, at the time of uh, the great tribulation. Okay, but um, uh, during the last three and a half years of tribulation, okay, so we already saw that the great tribulation period is going to be for seven years. Uh, the first First half will be three and a half years, and the second will be the three and a half years. It is divided into two. Now, uh, during the last three and a half years of tribulation, Antichrist will break the covenant. Break the covenant. So all of a sudden, when he takes the charge of the world, and when he, he takes the charge of the people of Israel, he will make a covenant very peacefully, and, uh, and uh, Antichrist will say, no problem. I will help you, I will support you, and I will give you everything, whatever you want, and uh, I will give you the freedom of worship, and I will give you a temple, and everything. Everything is okay for three and a half years. But after the three and a half years, what is going to happen? You know, the Antichrist will break the covenant with Israel, and he will ask them to worship him instead of Jehovah God. Okay? So after the three and a half years, 
he will insist them he will ask them, ask them ask the people of israel to worship him worship and a christ instead of jehovah god and when the jews refused to do that when the jews refused to do that there comes the severe persecution so that will be the, the second part the second three and a half years will be the severe persecution for every one of us every everyone those who are living uh, on the earth um, in those days okay so the jewish people most of the jewish people they will refuse it okay? they will refuse and we cannot uh, i mean worship the anti christ we were thinking that this is the messiah but you are not a messiah but we cannot worship you then there comes the severe persecution there comes severe persecution so listen so when in in john's measurement okay so here john is apostle john is measuring the temple okay now john's measurement of the temple is a symbolic action okay in in his vision he is watching that okay uh, he is given a, a kind of rod to measure the temple and the people inside the temple but you can take it it was you cannot take it as a literally i mean he was not i mean uh, measuring the temple or the measuring the people but it is it is just like a, a symbolic action okay uh, when you study about that to to measure something uh, means to claim uh, that thing for ourselves okay for example when uh, when we uh, uh, measure our uh, property or something you know that means we are measuring that to own that okay and we are claiming that okay whatever i measured and i did this measurement and this part is for me and this portion is for me and i am going to buy that portion okay i am going to purchase that portion so that is the meaning that when somebody is <coughs> measuring something you know in the old testament period it was like that you know in the old testament period it was like that somebody when they measure something especially the property or something you know that means they claim that okay this is mine this is mine okay so here in this measuring the temple there are two things to notice okay there are two things to notice especially uh, chapter 11 verses 1 and 2 chapter 11 verses 1 and 2 clearly <clears throat> there are two things to notice that measure and do not measure measure and do not measure see verse 1 then there was given me a measuring rod like a staff and someone said get up and measure the temple of god and the altar and those who worship in it measure something measure the temple of god measure the altar measure those who are worshiping inside at the same time second instruction the second instruction is in verse 2 leave out the court which is outside the temple and did not measure it for it has been given to the nations and they will tread under foot the holy city for 42 months we'll we'll come back to that point again now there are two things very very importantly no, notice that measure and do not measure in chapter 11 verses 1 and 2 okay that means protection is there at the same time destruction is there protection is there destruction is there for whom the protection is there god will protect those people who believed in the true messiah god will protect those people who believed in the true messiah okay but he will punish and destroy the jewish people who refused the messiah listen so when jesus christ was coming on this earth and when jesus took the uh, when jesus took the form of man and came into this world you know a majority of the people of israel they did not accept jesus as their lord or savior okay they just I mean, rejected him okay they re- just rejected him and jesus was not accepted by all the people of israel okay they rejected him at the same time there are some people who uh, believed in jesus christ and they were following jesus christ and they became christians okay even even today also there are majority of the jewish people they don't accept jesus as their savior or as the leader okay but we understand during the time of the great tribulation period i already told you that there are somebody to tell them about the reality of the christianity there will be somebody to share them about the, the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of the kingdom of god okay because they were expecting um, what is that uh, the political kingdom but 
Jesus Christ is not coming to this earth to, uh, to proclaim or to establish any I mean, political kingdom, but Jesus came into this world to build a spiritual kingdom. Okay, so you have to understand one thing, you know, uh, if during the time of the Great Tribulation also, uh, there will be many people uh, believing that this Antichrist is not the Messiah, but Jesus Christ was the Messiah. There will be many people believing in that. Uh, and, and God will give the protection for those people, the Jewish people. God will give the protection for those people. At the same time, God will punish and destroy the Jewish people who refused the Messiah. So that is going to happen. And that is the meaning of this particular two verses of chapter, chapter 11. So again, when you, when you read about measuring the temple or uh, measuring the, the altar or measuring the people, uh, those who are worshipping and do not I mean, uh, uh, measure the court outside the temple. And what do you mean by that? You know, when you, when you study about the temple or the tabernacle, the temple or the tabernacle in the Old Testament was a resemblance of the fellowship with God. And also it was a resemblance of the presence of God. Or, or God lives with the people, or God lives with the people. In that concept, uh, there are different types of temples or tabernacles in the Bible. Okay, there are different types of temples or different types of tabernacles in the Bible. Okay, just for your understanding, I will uh, tell you which are those. Okay, you know, you have to take in that sense only that because. Now, uh, you will understand, I mean, why I am uh, giving this portion to you because, you know, in, when you read the Old Testament, uh, the temple or the tabernacle in the Old Testament, it is, a, it is a resemblance of the fellowship with God. Okay? When God wanted to have a fellowship with the, the people and when God want to um, uh, reveal his presence uh, for the people and when God want to live with the people uh, that is the meaning that there is a temple, there is a tabernacle inside the temple inside the tabernacle God comes and the glory of God will, will appear and the people of God will uh, can watch the, the glory of God inside the temple or inside the tabernacle. Okay, so in that concept when you think about, you know, that is the place of presence of God. The temple the tabernacle is a place of place of um, presence of God or the fellowship of God, okay, with the human being. Okay, so that's the reason I'm giving you some of the uh, uh, some of the I mean uh, ideas about the different types of the temples in 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 Bible. The first one is in that idea in that concept only. Otherwise, you cannot call all those things uh, like a temple, temple, temple. But I'm giving in that I mean concept that. Uh, according to that concept, you can say that these are the temples, these are the temples, or these are the, what is that, like a tabernacle or the tent of God, where God was living, God was trying to live with the people, and God was having the presence of God upon the people. The first thing that you can see, that is the temple in the Garden of Eden. In the, te the, the, the temple, which is in the Garden of Eden, uh, which is mentioned in Genesis chapter 2 and 3, chapters 2 and 3. Now, when you, when you study about that temple, this is the first temple which doesn't have any walls. There was no building. There was no altar. There was no court or something like that. Okay, So God himself comes down to stay and have a fellowship with man every evening into that garden. That's what we read in Genesis chapter 2 and 3. So God want to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, abide with the people or, or God want to stay with the people and God want to have a fellowship with the, with the man. So that was the reason that God was coming down from heaven every day, every evening, every evening to that garden. Okay? So that is called as the temple in the garden of Eden and which, which doesn't have any, any walls or building or altar or court or something. But God himself was coming down and having that fellowship. That is called as a temple, the first temple in this world. And the second one is the, the tabernacle. Okay. The second one is the tabernacle. So we already, 
studied, I think many things about all these things when we were, when I was giving a message on, on, on Sunday, maybe for one month, I think. Okay. So uh, that I, I, I've been uh, speaking many things about those things, about the restoration, about the restoration. Okay. And, and even when, when I was the, I mean, uh, teaching you about the book of Hebrews also, I gave you more, many things about all those things. So the second tab, second one is the tabernacle. Okay, that is mentioned in book of Exodus and uh, book of uh, Leviticus and everything. This tabernacle is made by Moses. This tabernacle is made by Moses. And the intention behind that tabernacle also, that God wanted to stay with the people. God wanted to have a fellowship with the, the human being. And that tabernacle was made by Moses, but it was according to the order given by God given by God, and it was made while Israel, the people of Israel, were traveling from Egypt to Canaan. So when those people were traveling from Egypt to Canaan, now God told them that Moses, God told Moses that you have to make a tabernacle, and I have to live in that tabernacle. My glory will be revealed inside the tabernacle, and it was God's I mean, presence there. So when they were, I mean, traveling from Egypt to Canaan, and it was a temporary tabernacle in the wilderness. Okay, only in the wilderness, those people of Israel were using that tabernacle in order to, in order to indicate that there is a presence of God inside the temple or inside the tabernacle. And the third one, the third temple, it was the Solomon's temple. Okay, that is very clear, and we know that in Second Samuel and the First King, and also in Jeremiah. Everywhere it is written about Solomon's temple. Okay, so that temple was built by Solomon, but it was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian king. <clears throat> Nebuchadnezzar was the Babylonian king, and he destroyed the Solomon's temple. That is the third one. And the fourth one is Zerubbabel's temple. Okay, Zerubbabel's temple. There are uh, totally there are ten uh, temples are there. But uh, you are getting now five, and the uh, five more are there to be coming. The fourth one is Sirubabel's temple, which is mentioned in Ezra chapter 6, verses 15 and 16. That we also we already studied many things about that when we were studying about the restoration of the, of the, of the Christian people or the, of the people of Israel. And the fifth one, mm -hmm. and the fifth temple is Herod's temple, the temple of Herod. The temple of Herod, when you study about the temple of Herod, you know, usually the people ask, is there any, anything written in Bible about the Herod's temple or Herod build any, any, any temple? Okay? Actually, the, for the answer, let, let me give the answer for that. You know, there is no direct uh, the reference to prove that this temple was built by Herod. Okay? There is no direct reference to prove that this temple was built by Herod. This temple was there during the time of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus Christ was living in this earth and when Jesus Christ was doing his public ministry, this uh, temple was there. Okay? Uh, there is no direct, I, I told you, there is no direct reference in the Bible to prove that this temple was built by Herod, the king. But, uh, but the history proves, the history proves that uh, it was built by 46 years and 46 years, okay? This temple was built by 46 years. They took 46 years to build all this temple. Even the same thing is mentioned in John chapter 2, verse 20. Yeah, if you can read that verse there. Elsa, John 2, 20. The Jews then said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? Okay, so it, this is a conversation with... Uh, those people of Jesus and also Jesus was uh, giving some ideas about those things. You know, uh, history says that they took to, I mean, took 46 years to build this uh, temple of Herod. Okay, so that is history. At the same time, uh, I mean, uh, here in John chapter 2, verse 20, also it says that uh, 46 years, the, the, the account of the 46 years it took to, I mean, to build that temple. Anyway, okay, that is the fifth one. And the sixth temple is the temple of Christ, which is very clear from John chapter 2, verses 19 and 21. Okay, Even Jesus said that, Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, 
and in three days I will raise it up. Okay? Destroy this temple. Jesus was not talking about the temple of Herod. Jesus was not talking about the temple of temple of Herod. People were thinking, the Pharisees were thinking, or other people were thinking, okay, oh, Jesus is, uh, if he destroy this temple of Herod, Jesus will say, Jesus is saying that Jesus is going to build it up in three days. But Jesus was talking about his own body that is called in, in verse 21, but he was speaking of the temple of his body. He was, he was speaking of the temple of his body. He was not speaking about Herod's temple, but he was speaking about the temple himself. Okay, that is his body. Okay, so that is the fifth one. And the sixth one <coughs> is the temple of Christ. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the, the temple in man or the temple of God. Seventh one, yeah. The seventh one is the temple in man or the temple of God. Can you read a first Corinthians chapter 316? Only one verse. First Corinthians 316. Um, Try hard. Isn't it second Corinthians or is it first? First Corinthians 316. Okay. But you know, know that you are a temple of God. Yes? Yeah, I read it. Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Two verses are there, but only one we read. Okay, first Corinthians 3, verse 16, and second Corinthians 6, verse 16 also is there. But it says that the temple in man, okay, or the temple in man or the temple of God. Okay, it says that, do you know that? You are the temple of God, you and me, every child of God, <clears throat> every Christian, every believer. Is a temple of God. That is the seventh one. And now we will go to the eighth one. The eighth one. And about this we are studying now. In, in chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. <clears throat> what is that? The tribulation period temple. That means during the time of the great tribulation. There will be a, there will be a temple. That is known as the tribulation period. About which in Revelation chapter 11. Verses uh, 1 and 2, it is already mentioned. Okay, There are many other verses also. Uh, I think, okay, already I gave you those verses when we were uh, 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 initially studying about these things. Today itself. Okay. Anyway, this is that, that we are studying now, the tribulation period temple. And the ninth one is the millennium temple. Okay, the millennium temple. Can you read uh, Revelation 20 verses uh, 1 to 3? Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit and the great chain. And he seized the dragon, that ancient spirit, who was the devil and Satan, and bound him and bound him for a thousand years, and threw him into the into the pit and shut it and sealed it over him, so that he might not be so that he may not deceive the nations any longer, until a thousand years were ended. After he must be released for a little while. Okay. So this is the is the millennial temple, and also the last one, the tenth one is the eternal temple, eternal temple, which is written in Revelation chapter twenty one, verse twenty two. Revelation chapter twenty one, verse twenty two. It says that I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb are its temple. Okay, and again, Revelation chapter twenty two, verses one to twenty one. You will read about that and Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11, also you can read also. 5, 11. Yes. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade the others, but we are, but we are, but we are is known to God, and I hope it is known also to your conscience. Okay, so these are the <clears throat> main uh, temples or tabernacles you can understand from the uh, uh, from the from the from the Bible or from the history. Okay, so now we will go to the third point. So the third point is the ministry of the two witnesses. The ministry of the two witnesses. That is from chapter 11, verses 1 through 14. 
okay chapter 11 verses 1 through uh, 14 okay the ministry of the two witnesses okay so now we are going uh, to chapter 11 mainly uh, we'll be fo focusing now because we already finished chapter 10 okay we finished chapter 10 and now we are in chapter 11 <clears throat> okay so uh, maybe chapter 11 verses uh, Three and four. Elsa, you can read that first. Three and four. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prof prophesy for one thousand two hundred sixty days, clothed in sackcloth. These are these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. Okay, so. Uh, you can see in that particular verse about the ministry of the two witnesses are there. Two witnesses are there. Okay. Actually, it is not mentioned here about who are these two witnesses or these two prophets. Okay. Anyway, they have the authority. They have the authority to do, to do many things. But at the same time, uh, there is not mentioned that, I mean, who are these people? Who are these two prophets or who are these two witnesses? Okay. There is no idea from where they are coming. There is no idea from where they are coming, either where they are coming from heaven or coming from the earth. Okay? There is no idea at all. It is not written there. Okay? Anyway, it says that, eh? it says that, and I will grant authority to my two witnesses, to, to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days, clothed in sackcloth. Okay. Even though it is nothing mentioned about who are these people and from where they are coming, according to their authority and according to the method of ministry, there are different opinions among the Bible scholars. You know? The Bible scholars have different opinions about who are these people, who are these two witnesses. Are they the, the human being or are they the angels or somebody? Okay? The, uh, uh, some of the some of the <clears throat> major opinions are, are given in the screen sharing now that two specific angels of God. Okay, somebody says that these are the two specific angels of God. Okay, and some says that it is one thousand four hundred and one lakh forty four thousand one lakh forty four thousand sealed people. We already studied about all those things. One lakh forty four thousand sealed people. And some people say that these two witnesses are Elijah and John the Baptist. Elijah and John the Baptist. There are many reasons for that also. Okay? You don't have time to look into those portions, but this is, these are the main uh, opinions that the scholars are giving us. Okay? They, those people may be Elijah and John the Baptist, Enoch or uh, Elijah, or Moses and Elijah, and the last one is two witnesses came with the spirit of Moses and Elijah. Okay, these are the uh, some, these are some of the uh, main uh, opinions of the scholars. Okay, two specific angels of God, one lakh forty four thousand sealed people, maybe Elijah and John the Baptist, maybe Enoch and Elijah, maybe Moses and Elijah, and the last one is maybe two witnesses came with the spirit of Moses. And Elijah. But majority of the Bible scholars think that it could be either Moses and Elijah, either Moses and Elijah, or two witnesses came with the spirit of Moses and Elijah. Maybe the first one or second one. Uh, we do not know that because it is nothing is mentioned about the names of those people, names of the witnesses of the, the people those are giving testimony. Okay. It might be okay, either Moses and Elijah coming, or two witnesses came with the spirit of Moses and Elijah. It could be two angels, two specific angels. We do not know that. Okay, whatever maybe that is not our matter. But uh, think about all those things, and this is going to happen. Okay, so that is mentioned in chapter eleven, uh, the beginning verses. At the same time, uh, when you read uh, verses seven to ten, verses seven to ten, you can see. Uh, the martyrdom of the witnesses. Okay, that is the next one. Okay, in verses seven to ten, it is written that how these 
two witnesses are going to die. See how the martyrdom of these two witnesses is going to happen when they have finished their testimony. The beast that comes up out of the abyss will make war with them and overcome them and kill them and their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city which mystically is called Sodom and Egypt where also their Lord was crucified. Amen? Then again, those from the peoples and tribes and tongues and nations will look at their dead bodies for three and a half days and will not permit their dead bodies to be laid in the tomb. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and celebrate and they will send gifts to another, one another because these two prophets uh, 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 tormented those who dwell on the earth. So God is sending these two witnesses. God is sending these two witnesses on this earth with a purpose. With the purpose of doing many things, making uh, uh, making some some kind of miracles, and also I mean uh, torturing the people, torturing the people, fighting. Okay, all these things are there. Okay, so they are coming with a task. These witnesses are coming with a task, and because of that, because these people were torturing the people of this world, you know, those people will give the gift one another. That means, okay, they are already died. Those people are died. Those prophets are died. Okay, they say that okay, these pro prophets are died, and these two witnesses are died. So the martyrdom of those people are done. So we are enjoying in the martyrdom of those witnesses. Okay, and again, but what God is doing in verses eleven to fourteen, verses eleven to fourteen, we read that. When there is a resurrection of the witnesses. There is a resurrection of the witnesses. Amen. It says, but after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God came into them. And they stood on their feet and great fear fell upon those who were watching them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here, come up here. Then they went up into heaven in the cloud and their enemies was them. Okay? And in that hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake, and the rest were terrified and gave glory to God of heaven. The second war is past. Behold, the third war is coming quickly. Okay. So, listen. So, after the resurrection of the witnesses, okay, we saw that. Two witnesses coming, okay, and we, 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 I just personally believe that these two witnesses are coming from heaven. Two witnesses are coming from heaven, and at the same time, after coming there, okay, after their their coming, you know, uh, 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 it says that okay, they have a task, they have something to do with the people those who are living in this world, and after that, they are dying. Okay, their martyrdom is there in verse seven to ten. And again, there is a resurrection of those people, resurrection of those witnesses. And 14th verse says that the second war is past. Okay? Behold, the third is coming quickly. Which means, you know, everything is done by the sixth, the sixth trumpet. When the sixth trumpet was blown, everything is done. Now, Another one, the next one, the last one, the seventh trumpet judgment is coming quickly. So that is what the seventh trumpet from Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 through 19. Amen. So it is, I mean, time is up, and uh, uh, you know, uh, we will study maybe uh, those points in the in the uh, in the next class because um, that is a is a was subject, and we will have to uh, take some more time for that. Uh, we will not get enough time to complete that portion, the seventh trumpet. So listen, so the, the sixth, up to the sixth the trumpet is over and there is a, uh, there, is, there is a gap or there is, a, there is an interval between the sixth and the seventh trumpet. Okay, so that is chapter 10. That is chapter 10 and also chapter 11 verses 1 to 40. Okay, now in the next class, we will study about Revelation chapter 11 verses 15 to 19. It speaks about 
the seventh trumpet and what is going to happen in that time. And there will be an announcement of victory and there will be an acclamation of the praise and there will be an assurance of God's faithfulness. Okay. So what God is going to do during the time of the seven, during the time of the seven trumpet judgment. Okay. So that we will study in the coming classes and uh, let us all uh, join together in prayer and uh, let us all commit also with the mighty hand of God as we were listening uh, the word of God this evening that God's presence is everywhere and God is there to man, lead us and guide us. Amen. In our personal life, we have to get the presence of God every time. 